Now we're starting to have some fun. This is video number 10 in our building science module and I am Allison Bales of Energy Vanguard here to guide you through this lesson on series and parallel heat flow. Let's start with the easy case of series heat flow. This is where you have an assembly made up of different layers. The layers separate the hot side from the cool side so the heat has to travel through every single layer from the hot side to the cool side. That means that the amount of heat flow is going to be the same no matter which path it takes and the R values in this case will add. So the total R value is going to be the R value of layer A in this case plus the R value of layer B. That's our total R value. It doesn't matter how many layers we have we could have a hundred layers here, we would just add up all the R values. Let's look at a quick example. Let's say we have foam board that has an R value of 10 and we put that on a concrete foundation wall that has an R value of 1. It's very simple. The total R value is 10 plus 1 or 11. We've got an R11 foundation wall now by putting that R10 foam board on it. Series heat flow. Parallel heat flow. Rather than layers, we have pathways and the pathways are choices that the heat has. The heat can go either through one path or another. In this case we've got two different pathways even though the two pathways here labeled number one are in different places they're the same type of material so we call them the same pathway we can just add them together. The amount of heat that travels through the assembly depends on which path it takes. The way we handle this is that we average the U values and we average the U values using this formula that you see down here. In this case we have only two types of pathways, 1 and 2. So we're going to multiply the U value for pathway 1 times its area and then add it to the multiplication of U2 and A2. We do all that math on the top then we divide by the total amount of area and that will give us the average U value. Okay, This works for any number of pathways. I've shown it for only two pathways here but if we had 50 pathways it would still work. We would just have to add more terms into our equation. It would be U average equals U1 times A1 plus U2 times A2 plus U3 times A3 plus U4 times A4 dot 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 all the way out to 50 and the area would be the total area. Let's look at an example here. This is a simple parallel heat flow problem. Let's say we've got a ceiling and it's a thousand square feet total. 990 square feet of it has R38 insulation but we've got 10 square feet of attic stairs that's uninsulated and we're going to call that R1. If you want to try this problem yourself hit the pause button and see if you can calculate the average U value and the average R value for this parallel heat flow problem. And then come back and see if you got it right. We apply this formula U average equals U1 times A1 plus U2 times A2 divided by A total. Remembering that we're given R values here but we have to put U values in the equation but we know the relation between R and U. If we want U and we know R, U is equal to 1 over R. So here's what we've got. Pathway 1 is the insulated part and U1 would be 1 over 38. A1 would be 990. So we do this first and here's a little tip for you. Instead of doing 1 over 38 in your calculator and then multiplying that by 990, the easy way to do this is just 990 divided by 38. Gives you the same exact answer. You have to do that first. So 990 divided by 38 gives us the first part. Then we go over here and we do this part. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 times 10 is 10. So we've got 10 here. When we do 990 divided by 38 we get 26. And 26 plus 10 is 36. 36 divided by 1000 is 0 .036. So that is our average U value. But if we want to know what the average R value is we just do 1 over U average. So 1 divided by 0 .036 put that in your calculator you get 27.7. The takeaway here is that 1% uninsulated area can have a huge effect on your heat flow. 
because that knocks your R value of that R38 attic down from R38 to R28, basically. Now, let's look at the series and parallel heat flow problem. This one is more complex. This is a more realistic case because most of the time we do have both series and parallel heat flow. So let's see what we've got. The first thing we need to do is look at our pathways and we're going to add all the R values in each pathway. So if this is path 1, we're going to add RA to RB in that path. And then in path 2, we're going to add the R value of this to the R value of that and that will give us the two R values that we need to average. But of course, in averaging those R values, we're going to turn them into U values first because the equation works with U values. It's the same basic formula. Works for any number of layers, any number of pathways. Let's look at an example. This is a ceiling assembly. And we've got 1,000 square feet of area. We've got 2 by 10 joists. 16 inches on center with R30 blown insulation in between. Each joist has an R value of 11.5 and then the bottom layer, the drywall, has an R value of 0.5. The next thing we need to know is the area. So the joists are 1.5 inches wide. A 2 by 10 is 1.5 by 9 and a quarter. So the width is 1.5. We've got 16 inches on center, so the cavity is 14 and a half inches. And the relative areas then would be 1.5 divided by 16. So out of every 16 inches across, we're going to have one and a half inches of the ceiling joist. If we do that division, multiply by 100%, that's 9.4% of the area will be ceiling joist. And 14 and a half out of 16 is 90.6% of all the area will be the insulation. If we multiply those percentages out, 9.4 percent of a thousand square feet is 94 square feet and 90.6 percent of a thousand square feet is 906 square feet. Those are the areas of the ceiling joists and the insulation respectively. If you want to give this a stab, see if you can try to find the average U value and the average R value. Now hit the pause button and see if you can get those calculations. All right, let's 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 work through this now. So the first thing is we've got two pathways. We've got the pathway where the heat travels through the ceiling joists and then the drywall. That is what we're calling path one. And we've got the pathway where the heat travels through the insulation and then the drywall. That's path two. If it goes through the ceiling joists, the R value it encounters is 11.5 through the wood and then 0.5 in the drywall. That's the layers, the series heat flow. So the total R value is the sum of those, so it's 12.0. If it goes through the insulation, and this should say joists or insulation over here, if it goes through the insulation, it encounters an R30 through the insulation, then 0.5 through the drywall, so the total would be 30.5. Here are our two areas. So these are the, the numbers that we need for the equation. Here's our equation now. The average U value is U1 times A1. So U1 is R, uh, 1 over R12, and the area is 94. U2 is 1 over 30.5, and the area 2 is 906. So if we work that out, 94 divided by 12, and remember that little shortcut there, is 7.83. And 906 divided by 30.5 is 29.7. If we add those two together and divide by 1,000, we get 0 0.038. And that's our average U value. Our average R value would be 1 divided by that, or 26.6. So in this case, our ceiling with 94 square feet of joists, and 906 square feet of insulation has an average R value of 26.6. So you can see the framing in the assembly here does have an effect. It lowers the R value a little bit from 30 to 26.6.
Overall, it's not nearly as bad as having that 1% uninsulated area that we had in the previous problem. So that's a quick introduction to series and parallel heat flow. Very important concept to understand. In energy modeling, we use this stuff all the time.